What if there were no right decision and that the truth is you can make all of your decisions right? What if when you find yourself questioning if you should be doing something differently and whether you should change your mind, it's actually your brain's fear response? And what if it were easier to be 100% committed than part committed? In part two of this podcast on decisions, we're going to go to all of those places. If you're ready, grab your brew, grab your pen and paper, and let's dive right in. Now, in last week's episode, episode 168, we talked about how you really have so much inspiration available to you right now by being your own inspiration, because already I'm pretty certain that in your life you have made some really courageous decisions that you haven't given yourself credit for. We also talked about what's a great decision for you right now at this time in your life. And we also talked about the decision manifesto and the whole intent around that was to provide you with inspiration about how powerful decisions can be for you when you get clear on what it means for you and what it means for you to implement those decisions into your life and that you can be your own inspiration. Now, today's intention is actually is more about the motivation for you to make powerful decisions for yourself with a greater understanding of how we make them and why we make them and how do we take consistent action once we've made them because I know from personal experience like it's exhausting constantly changing your mind and what's even more exhausting is when you feel like you're constantly having the same conversations and constantly seeking new answers but you're always finding yourself in the same place with the same results in your life like there isn't much more frustrating than that And then at the end, we're going to find a little bit of homework. We're going to help you find the you that will do the do. And that will make sense in a second. So let's start with number one, how to make the right decision. And like I said, what if there weren't a right decision, just the one that you picked and you acted from? Now, the problem with this is that as a human being, you are going to have an element of yourself where you want to have certainty of the outcome. That's just part of being human. You want to know that what you're going to do is going to work. You also, as a human being, don't want to have a huge amount of discomfort, if any. And when you're looking to make changes and create new results or new experiences in your life, it's really, really unlikely that you're going to be able to do that without experiencing some form of discomfort. You're not going to have exact certainty about what's going to happen. And so what happens then is you end up staying in this space of uncertainty, of indecision. Now, when you're in indecision, you keep talking to yourself and telling yourself, I don't know how, and I'm going to just spend more time making my decision. That is just a really clever safety mechanism from your brain. Because when you don't make a decision, you don't need to make a change. And when you don't need to make a change, your brain feels safe. Even when you are inherently miserable in the condition or the the experience that you're in now, when you stay in indecision and you don't make a change, your brain feels completely safe in your discomfort of being where you are. So when we look at using the the decision manifesto that I talked you through in the last episode, and you add trust in yourself that you have the ability to make a decision and then work that decision. And then you let the results be nothing more than data. There's nothing personal, like it's just data. And you use that data to inform you about what happens next. This is one of the things that I work a lot with my clients. Like we are, especially if like me, you're empathic and intuitive and clairsentient and really like, you know, highly sensitive and all the things. It's so easy for us to, to make a decision take action and then make it all about us when things don't work or they don't go the way we want it to go. It becomes a very personal experience. And one of the the most freeing things that I can do for my clients is help them make a decision, take action and see the results as nothing more than data. And that data just informs us, informs us of our next steps, of our next decision, of our next pathway, if you like. So when you use a decision manifesto where you're basing your decisions based on your values, and the the feelings that you want to have and the way that you want to bring purpose into your daily life and you put trust in yourself that you will always figure it out that's super powerful so take away number one that I want you to write down tattoo on your forehead whatever is that you get to choose to believe that you have the power to make every decision the right one 
how good does that feel in your body? Like even for me, as I was writing it out for myself, I was like, ooh, totally needed that today, <laughs> right? So you can choose to believe that you have the power to make every decision the right one. Now, part number two comes as a bit of a warning because when a decision is associated with, should I change my mind or should I change what I'm doing? It can be a result of one of the following. It can be a result of a fear response. It can be a result of boredom and it can be a result of attachment to the external outcome. And I'm going to give you some examples of that so you can understand it. So if we go to, to number one, the fear response, like I said, anything that our brain feels uncomfortable with is it will have some kind of warning shot about this being a fear response. And so I need to keep you safe and I need to keep you alive. And it'll do all kinds of ingenious things to keep you from changing. Now, when I'm working and coaching with small business owners, it, this comes up really frequently. And people will say to me like, oh, I've had this inspired idea. I need to act on it and la, 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 la. And oftentimes when we dig a little deeper, the truth of the matter is, is that if they stick with what they've already got, it means they've got to run with it. So let's just say, for instance, they were, I don't know, launching a new product or service. And if they don't change their mind, they've got to go through it. They've got to do the launch. They've got to put the offer out there and they've got to risk it failing. It's far more comfortable in their body and brain to have an inspired idea and to change their mind and to start back at the beginning because they get to avoid the potential discomfort. And again, when I'm working with small business owners or anybody that's looking to make a change in their life, if they feel like what they've been doing hasn't been working and it feels really painful to keep going because they're not getting the results that they want, it feels better in their body to just make a different decision in the hope that that's going to change stuff, right? So oftentimes the fear response is if I keep doing this, there's going to be pain further down the line. And I want to avoid that. If I change my mind, that's how I avoid it. So you don't know you're doing that, or you do now. So just hold on to that one. Now, the next one is boredom. We have um, one of the human drives is the human drive for new. All right. And we, most of us like to experience new stuff. We like different experiences. We like to feel different emotions. We like to just experience life. And you and I know that when you want to achieve something, doesn't matter what it is, whether you're looking to change your relationship, your career, your business, your health, your purpose, you know, whatever that is, you, there is going to be a demand on you for a level of consistency for doing some of the same things over and over and over and over again. And if you're like me and you get bored super quick, this can make you want to gouge your eyeballs out with spoons. So one of the ways to do that is to change our mind and do something different. This is really common with clients who, as part of their life change journey, want to get into better health. And they'll start with one particular nutrition program, or they'll start one particular exercise program, or they'll join a new class, or they'll, they'll go plant-based, or they'll do this. And then when they don't get the results they want in a fortnight, they're like, yeah, that's not working. I'm going to try something else. It's boredom. And we have to understand that there is going to be a need for repetition to get results and we can be aware of, oh, this is just a board, this is just a boredom um, response. And I just need to do something, you know, do something else different, but don't change my mind on this thing. Then we've got the the outcome attachment. And I think as a society, we have really completely devalued the journey, right? We we invest everything in the win being the outcome. When I get to the outcome, then I can celebrate because that's what it's all about. And we give no credit for the person we become on that journey that allows us to deal with the discomfort, that allows us to embrace the consistency, that allows us to honor the struggle, that allows us to bring the joy even when things aren't going the way we want it to, when we're not getting the results that we want, when we don't feel the way we want sometimes. You become just a... a, a there is more depth to you. There is more volume to you. There, like you're more technicolored because you are, you are changing so that you can create the outcome. But like I said, we've devalued this journey. So whenever you're looking to change anything in your life and you don't get the results that you want quick enough and you're so focused on how much happier or how much different or how much freer you're going to be when and then insert any of the outcomes you're working towards 
that's when you're going to keep changing your mind because you're going to be constantly looking for something that's going to get you to that place quicker. And the, the, the one thing that will get you where you want to go, like whatever it is that you want, there's only one thing that will get you where you want to go. And that is you becoming that person that's going to do the do. The takeaway from that is that you have to raise your self-awareness to get honest about the motivation for the decision that you're currently sitting in, right? When you're thinking about changing your mind, when you're thinking about doing something different, get really clear. Is there any chance that it could be a fear response, a boredom response, or an outcome attachment response? And there's, again, no shame, no blame, no judgment, just self-awareness. That's all, just self-awareness. And then I want you to remember to go back to the, the, the decision manifesto and ask yourself, if I was honoring this manifesto, what decision would I be making? Now, the third one, 100% commitment is easier than 98%. I heard this on a YouTube clip recently, and I believe that's a quote from, I think it was Michael Jordan. And I, it took a little while for it to, for, for it to integrate. And then I thought, wow, that's, I, that really landed with me. And the way that it landed with me, I'll share with you. Like it did, the guy didn't really explain it, but I took this, the meaning for myself. When, when it comes to decision-making and you say to yourself, right, I'm definitely going to lose weight this month. Like this quarter, I'm definitely going to make more money in my business. I'm definitely going to spend more time conversing with my husband or wife rather than being on social media. I'm definitely going to start living my purpose. And you know you've had that conversation like last week, last month, last year, over and over again. You can make the decision, but if you are not fully engaged, like on a soul level, on a this is it, no matter what, blah, 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 your brain has access. Now I can't explain it. Um, it's difficult to get the picture across. It's like your brain can spread its sabotage tentacles all over the place in every possible, every little crack in your decision. So when you're not 100% committed and you're 98% or 90 or 85 or 80, if you're committed Monday to Friday, but not Saturday to Sunday, right? If you're committed when things are going well, but not when they're not going well. If you're committed when you feel good, but you're not committed when you don't feel good, the tentacles of your brain will get into the cracks in that decision and it will rip it apart to make sure that you don't make that change. When you stick at 98% and not the 100% as well, you're still running programs around, ooh, like what might I lose if I'm 100% all in? How much of my comfort am I going to lose? How much of who I think I am am I going to lose? How many of my friendships might I lose? All of the things. You're running programs on how difficult it's going to be. It's going to be too hard. It's going to be too hard. It's going to be too hard. And also we've got running these programs on like, what if I do all this work and it doesn't, and I don't get the outcome that I want. Now, when you're running these programs, notice, that you're running the programs of fear and what if, rather than how do I problem solve for that? How do I become the person that doesn't have these models running so that I can actually succeed at my, with myself rather than sabotage myself? And the last thing that came up for me was that when we, when we don't fully commit, when we don't really become the 100% all in, you stay stuck in action versus identity. So you're like, I have to do these things. I have to eat better. I have to get off my phone. I have to do morning meditation. I have to, um, I have to do a morning journal. I have to put out sales emails. I have to. I have to, and you're stuck in this uh, this action space rather than asking yourself who do I need to be, like who do I need to be to do the do. Now I want to offer you here probably the most important thing that I'm offering myself over and over again right now is that 100% doesn't need to look and feel like you're training for the goddamn Olympics, right? You don't have to be, you know, Olympian style training, showing up for life, like where it feels so hard and so rigid and so unattainable and all the things, all the big things that make you feel like you've already got this concrete ceiling squashing you down like that. That does not have to be what 100% looks like. The takeaway take that I want to give you here is that you can be 100% all in and you can create space in your brain and your body and you can have compassion and you can take small action and you can get results. Your 100% is enough. 
And also that 100% is going to look different day to day. And when you think about like being 100% in all areas of your life, so I'm always going to be the coach that looks holistically at how you're growing and changing your life. If you, if I saw you as an example, trying to, I'm trying to think of an example. If I saw you trying to um, really nail your career and I noticed it through our coaching that, you know, you wasn't spending time with your family or you wasn't looking after your health. Like we're going to talk about that. Okay. Because that what, and, and this is where this hundred percent comes in, right? I'm getting a picture of, of an abacus. Hopefully you're as old as me and you don't remember what an abacus was. And I want you to imagine that, you know, if you, if each line of the abacus was like health and career or business and, and finances and spirituality and stuff like that, you might have like, three beads across on on the family this week or today and 10 beads on the career but each of those beads is still 100 percent. i really hope that makes sense it makes sense in my head i guess what i'm saying is that you can give a hundred percent but it's going to look different in different areas at different times depending on what you're working on and what really makes it a hundred percent is the intention about how you show up in each of those areas rather than just things that you do so the homework is on the premise that the the the, the non truth or what I, you know what I believe is a lie, is that when we make a new decision, we focus straight away on right. What does this look like? What have I got to do differently? And people tend to go there first. I want to offer you that when you make this decision today, that you have to think about the new daily thinking that is going to allow you to take the action that you need to take. Therefore. The 100% commitment, the 100% decision is going to require you to, to activate, to uh, get curious about, to try on, and then to act from a new identity. This is about finding the you that will do the do. And if, it, if this is a concept, if you've not listened to my podcast before, and this is a concept that feels a little bit alien to you, I'll, I'll just go back to when I used to do personal training and the clients that I worked with who came along and became curious about nutrition and became curious about how they move their body and they and they came from a place of never being on a diet never lo doing it just to lose weight they did it and because they wanted to embrace the journey they were the people that that got results they were they were ha they weren't happy, but they were willing to to get the slower results, and they were the ones that kept the results. They didn't go back to old ways of being because they weren't just stuck in action. They became that person that was really wanting to change their lifestyle to become healthier. They wanted to become a healthier person. They didn't want to just lose weight for twelve weeks and then go back to who they were before. So when we look at changing our life. It really is about changing the identity. And I want you to think about, you know, for yourself, if you're a mother, think about, you know, how, who you were, maybe when your, when your babies were small and how you had to be different with that. If you've had a career change or if you've had to look after an elderly parent or if, you've, if you have, you know, I don't know, become a, a, a thought leader in your industry or, or, or in your community, like there is a way that you show up differently in different stages of your life. And when we're showing up for our goals and we're showing up for life change, the most exciting part, even though it's the hardest part, is like, oh my goodness, who do I need to be to make this happen? So I hope that's made sense. So your homework in finding the you that will do the do is just very simple. Number one, I want you to think of the you who has, who has not committed fully before. And I want you to, to describe, write down, think in your head, what do they think when they're not doing and when they are doing so when they are committed to doing the things that they said they're going to do what are they thinking and then when you notice that version of yourself that quits that steps back that skips a day skips two days that does something different instead what thoughts go through your mind there that's going to show you the identity right now step number two if you were a hundred percent committed what would you need to start and stop doing and how does your thinking need to change to facilitate that so one of the things that I'm actively actively working on is bringing a, a, a touch of alchemy to everything that I do in my everyday life. 
that what stopped me from going there before now is the old fashioned thought of you, we have to work hard. We have to be busy. It's very, it's something that's passed down generationally. And I'm sure a lot of you have that as well. So in order for me to, to create this touch of alchemy every day in my life, I have to stop doing so much other stuff, you know, the hardworking stuff, the tangible stuff. And the thought that I have to have, or that I'm, that I'm working with right now is like, I'm allowed to have a life of alchemy. I'm allowed to have a life of magic. I'm allowed to relax. I'm allowed to take a step back. I'm allowed to create, like I'm just making these up off the top of my head, but that's where I'm going. So I just wanted to give you an example. So how do you need, how does your thinking need to change? And then I literally just want you to pick one power sentence. So your power sentence could be like, um, I'm allowed to let this be easier for myself or I can manage any challenge, or I'm not afraid of discomfort, like discomfort is the way that I grow, like think of a power statement that will help you transition that identity. And then I want you to think about one to two, one to three words that you can anchor into on a daily basis to remind yourself that when your brain steps in and goes, don't do that. And you go, hang on a minute, I am curious, I am courageous, and I am grounded. I'm going to be that person and I'm going to make a decision and take an action from that place. And then when you've got that with the decision manifesto, you have got this container where you make the choice. Do I act from this container or do I act from the container that I've been living in that has created the results that I've got right now? Now, I appreciate that feels a little bit heavy, perhaps, or a little bit, ah, but realistically think about it. Decision manifesto from the, the previous episode was literally about what what's important to me what emotions do I want to feel and how does living purposefully every day look like for me and putting that into a sentence that guides your decision making and today all I'm asking you to do is to have an awareness of the version of you that doesn't show up 100% the version of you that does show up 100% and a statement and a couple of words that will bridge that gap for you that's it that's all you got to do in that midst of us all trying to find the right answer and decide on all the right action and do all the right things, we're missing the fact that bridging the gap between where we are and where we want to go is being able to recite a statement and have some words that anchor us back into, this is who I need to be to carry on. So powerful. So I hope you've enjoyed these bonus episodes, this past two, uh, two episodes. And uh, as always, appreciate you being part of the, the um, community. I'll speak to you again in the next episode of the Yacht Life Podcast.